All right, so today we're diving into something that I think, honestly, pretty much every student and really anyone who writes deals with, and that is global versus local goals in writing. It's kind of like um, if you're thinking about building a house, you've got the big picture, like the blueprint, which would be your global goals, and then you've got all the little details like picking out the right doorknobs. Those would be more of your local goals. And uh, I'll tell you, like I, I remember this one time I was writing a blog post, and I spent I kid you not, hours obsessing over which font to use. But I totally forgot to, you know, actually make the post engaging and interesting. I was so focused on the little details that I completely missed the big picture. So uh, to help us all avoid those kinds of, you know, facepalm moments, let's bring in our expert to kind of shed some light on this whole global versus local idea in writing, especially for students. So what's so important about this idea? Why should students care? Well, it's actually pretty fascinating how often students get bogged down in, you know, like the nitty gritty of grammar and formatting. Like they're stressing over where to put a comma, but their writing ends up lacking a strong argument or even a clear purpose. They're missing that overarching why behind their writing, which is a much bigger issue. Yeah, I've totally been there. So our source material actually gives some specific examples of these global and local goals. Can you break those down for us? Absolutely. So one example of a global goal is outlining, like before you even start drafting, it's about having a plan, a roadmap for your entire piece. On the flip side, a local goal might be something like formatting your paper in APA style. That's a technical detail. It's important, but it's operating on a totally different level. Okay. So it's like outlining is designing the entire house. While APA formatting is like choosing the paint color, both matter, but in different ways, right? right? But how does this how does this whole global versus local thing relate to a student's life outside of just, you know, academic papers? That's a great question. So think about something like writing a social media post. Your global goal might be to, you know, share a funny story, right? But maybe also subtly promote your blog. But your local goal. Your local goal might be making sure you're using the right hashtags and emojis to actually reach your audience. Wow. So even something as, you know, seemingly casual as like a tweet has these different levels of goals. Mm -hmm. It's making me think differently about how I approach writing those. Exactly. And even something as simple as as emailing a professor to ask for an extension, that has global and local goals, too. Like your global goal is to be respectful and persuasive in your request. But then your local goal is to make sure you, you know, Proofread for typos and use the correct salutation and all that. I'm starting to see a pattern here. Global is like the why and the what, and local is more like the how. But honestly, setting and achieving those global goals, like outlining and doing research, can feel super overwhelming. Any tips from our sources to make those tasks less daunting? Oh, for sure. So our source suggests, you know, breaking down big tasks into smaller, more manageable steps. So instead of saying, okay, I need to outline this entire research paper, tell yourself, all right, today I'm just going to focus on outlining the introduction and the first main point. I love that. It's like that old saying, uh, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> One bite at a time. <laughs> but what about research? Any advice on, on making that less intimidating. Yeah. So the source talks about creating an annotated bibliography as you go. So it's not just, you know, listing your sources, but also summarizing each one and noting how it connects to your topic. That's actually, that's a really smart strategy. It's like you're building your own little like research cheat sheet. But what about those, you know, those pesky local goals, grammar, formatting, those can trip anyone up. Oh yeah, for sure. So let's look at a common grammar issue that our source brings up. Active versus passive voice. Active voice makes your writing more direct and engaging. For example, the dog chased the ball is active, while the ball was chased by the dog is passive. Hear how that active version is more impactful. Yeah, it's like the difference between, you know, confidently striding into a room versus kind of like meandering in. But how do you how do you know when to use which one? Well, in most cases, active voice is preferred. It's clearer, more concise, and puts the focus on the action. Passive voice does have its place, though, especially in scientific writing or when the action is more important than who did it. Okay, that makes sense. What about formatting? Any any tricks for making sure we don't miss those local details? Yeah, our source recommends creating a formatting checklist specific to each project. So you'd include things like font, margins, heading styles, and how you're citing your sources. Having a checklist makes sure you're meeting the requirements and not, you know, losing points on those little but crucial details. I love checklists. I use them for everything. Well, I feel like we've covered so much already. What are What are some key takeaways that you want our listeners to walk away with so far? So I think we've established that both global and local goals are super essential for good writing. 
global goals shape, you know, the overall purpose and structure of your writing, while local goals make sure all the details are clear and correct. And uh, we've looked at some pretty practical ways to tackle both types of goals, from outlining and research techniques to grammar tips and those formatting checklists. Exactly. So whether you're writing a school paper, a creative piece, or even just a quick email, being aware of both the big picture and those finer points will help you communicate more effectively. But we're not done yet. We'll be back to dive even deeper into how these concepts can help you approach any writing task with more, uh, more confidence and clarity. So, you know, building on those global goals, one thing I've noticed is students often struggle with maintaining consistency, like in tone and voice, making sure their writing authentically sounds like them throughout a whole piece, you know? Oh, I feel that. Like, sometimes my writing feels like it's got five different personalities all crammed in. Does our source offer any advice on how to, like, find that consistent voice? Yeah, it suggests thinking about your audience and your purpose before you even start writing. So who are you writing this for? What impact do you want your words to have on them? And once you're clear about those things, you know, your natural voice starts to come through. That makes sense. Like if I'm writing a blog post for people who love fantasy novels, my voice is going to be way different than if I'm writing like a formal essay for a history class, exactly. right? It's yeah. all about fitting the, the context. Exactly. And remember, your voice doesn't have to be, you know, stiff or overly academic to be effective. Authenticity and clarity, those are key. Let your personality shine through, but uh, make sure it's appropriate for what you're writing. That definitely takes the pressure off. So finding our voice is one thing. What What other global goals should students be thinking about? Another crucial one our source highlights is uh, how to use feedback effectively. You know, getting input from others is great, but it can be tough to know what to do with all those suggestions sometimes. Ugh. Yes. Sometimes feedback feels like someone took a red pen and just went to town on my work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how do we sift through all that and still like stay true to our own ideas? Well, it's all about finding a balance. Our source emphasizes, you know, carefully considering the feedback you receive, but also trusting your gut. Not every suggestion needs to be implemented. Okay, that's reassuring to hear. So yeah. it's like taking what feels right, leaving what doesn't, and remembering that you're the one, you know, steering your writing ship, so to speak. Exactly. Feedback is a valuable tool, but it shouldn't drown out your own voice and vision for your writing. Before we wrap up this whole discussion on global goals, there's something I think a lot of student writers and really all writers wrestle with. How do we balance structure with creativity? You know, how can we make sure our writing is organized and logical without sounding like a robot? Well, the source offers a great analogy. Think of structure as the skeleton of your writing and creativity as the flesh and blood that bring it to life. Ooh, I like that. So the structure is like the foundation, the bones that hold everything together. Yeah. But it's the creativity that gives the writing its personality and makes it unique. That's it. And just like a skeleton needs both bones and muscles to function properly, good writing needs both structure and creativity to be truly effective. I mean, thinking of it that way definitely takes the pressure off. It means it's okay to like, have fun with your writing and try different things, as long as you've got that solid structure underneath. Absolutely. And remember, how you balance structure and creativity might change depending on what you're writing. A research paper is naturally going to need more structure than a personal essay, for example. Context is key. Okay, so we've covered a ton of ground on global goals, but let's not forget about our local goals. What are some, some common local challenges that students might face, and how can they overcome them? Well, punctuation is a big one. Commas, semicolons, dashes, they can be tricky. But mastering punctuation is like crucial for clear communication. Oh, tell me about it. I still mix up when to use a semicolon versus colon. Any uh, any advice from our source on how to conquer those punctuation woes? Well, it emphasizes practice and getting comfortable with the rules. The more you read and write, the more you'll naturally start to like internalize how punctuation works. So it's kind of like learning a new language. The more you immerse yourself in it, the more it becomes second nature. Exactly. And don't be afraid to use resources like style guides or, you know, grammar websites. There's no shame in looking things up. Right. Even even professional writers have to double check their grammar and punctuation sometimes. Nobody's expected to memorize every single rule. The key is to be aware of your weaknesses and actively work to improve them. Along with punctuation, another common local goal students have is um, improving sentence structure. Yes. Sentences are like the building blocks of our writing. So how can we make sure those blocks are you know, strong and clear and engaging? Our source suggests focusing on clarity and conciseness. Avoid jargon or overly complex sentences. 
Make sure the subject and verb are clear and that your modifiers are in the right place. So cut the fluff and get straight to the point. No more of those rambling sentences that leave the reader feeling like totally lost. Exactly. Short, impactful sentences are powerful, especially when you want to emphasize something. But also, don't be afraid to vary your sentence length to create a good flow in your writing. It's like music, isn't it? You need a mix of long and short notes to make a beautiful melody. I like that analogy. Just like a musician practices their scales to get better, writers can practice different sentence structures to develop their style and write more clearly. This is also helpful. I feel like I'm really getting a grasp on the, the nuances of global and local goals. Mm -hmm. But before we, uh, before we wrap up today, I want to touch on one more local goal that often trips students up. Avoiding spelling errors and typos. Ah, yes. The dreaded typos. They manage to sneak into even the most carefully written work. What does our source recommend for, for battling these little errors? It suggests like a multi-pronged approach. So first, you know, proofread carefully, not just once, mm -hmm. but several times, preferably after taking a break so your eyes are fresh. Oh, yeah. I know I'm guilty of like skimming my work and missing obvious typos. It's like my brain just autocorrects them even though they're wrong. Oh, totally. That happens to like everyone. Another helpful tip from the source is to read your work out loud. This can help you catch errors your eyes might skip over and also get a sense of the rhythm and flow of your writing. Oh, that's a great idea. It's like giving your writing a performance test almost. Yeah. If it sounds, you know, weird or clunky when you read it out loud, you probably need to make some changes. Exactly. And finally, uh, don't be shy about using technology to your advantage. Spell checkers and grammar checkers can be useful, but, you know, remember they're not perfect. You always need to use your own judgment and knowledge of grammar rules to make the final decision. Right. They're like helpful assistants, not the ultimate writing gurus. Well said. So I think we've explored pretty much every aspect of global and local goals in writing today. Yeah, we've definitely done a deep dive. It's amazing how much goes into the writing process when you really break it down. It's true. But um, as we've discovered, you know, understanding the difference between these global and local goals and having strategies to tackle each one, it can really help students become more confident and, and effective writers no matter what they're working on. Absolutely. And, and the journey of a writer is never really over, is it? There's always room to learn and grow. So keep practicing, keep experimenting, and most importantly, have fun with your writing. Now, before we wrap up, we'd like to leave you with something to think about. How can understanding these different levels of goals, the global and the local, help you approach your next writing assignment with more confidence and clarity? That's a great question to ponder. We encourage you to you know, reflect on that and see how these ideas fit into your own writing process. Until next time, happy writing.